Hey San Diego, welcome back to the Apartment Geek Weekly. I'm excited about a special episode with a friend, Sean Puckett of Mechanics Bank, Vice President of Mechanics Bank. And um, we're gonna be talking about perspective from, from his role within his, um, with, with his work and with his involvement in the community and here in San Diego. And I also wanna make a reminder to everybody who's watching that we're having the rent control what now event tomorrow at the vault which is the cool um, exotic car storage place off miramar road here in san diego so if you want to go and you haven't rsv rsvp'd we're having a little bit of uh, miscommunication with people who want to go they say they're going to go but they haven't let us know through rsvp so please let us know and uh sean um welcome to the video i'm happy to have you here um, can you, in a nutshell, kind of uh, tell people what you do and really kind of what makes you different or what gives you an edge? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm really stoked on what you've been doing, and I love the, uh, way, the way that you do this show. So Thank thanks you. for having me on. Yeah, I try to have fun with it. Yeah. Organic. So I'm a, I'm a good old-fashioned relationship banker. You know, I represent Mechanics Bank, and um, my clients are business owners. Yeah. And they're trying to take their business to the next level. And I've been doing my craft for 20 years. Yeah. And so I partner with them on their strategy and help make banking easy for them and help make commercial lending easy for them. Got it. Um, and so I think my edge is that uh, I, I represent a community bank, which yeah. are generally more flexible than a large, you know, national bank. Yeah. Um, another edge that I have, I think, is that for 10 years I had to underwrite my own loans. Yeah. So I kind of know the technical side of lending. Okay. So when I'm talking strategy with a business owner, we're looking at balance sheet and P&L, I kind of know the reality of what the result's going to be. So as they're telling me what their vision is and they're looking into the future and we're trying to figure out how to cover that gap that yeah. may include financing, Yeah. Um, I'm a really good partner for that. So yeah, I like that. So it sounds like just well-rounded. You can, you can kind of get nitty gritty ticky tacky I always say with the numbers yeah. small picture and then look big picture planning direction yeah vision yeah and one of the really neat things that people um, I don't think look at sometimes when you're dealing with a banker that's been in the craft for 20 years yeah is I've worked with all different industries right so I've seen different problems uh, that may be the same for all different business owners but represented through different industries yeah and being able to have those experience shares with other entrepreneurs and say this is what I've seen uh, adds tremendous value. So that's the coolest part of my job, right? I get to work with people in all different industries. And I get to see so much more than uh, the normal person would in their profession. So. You're making me jealous. I kind of want to get into that maybe. The thing I love about Sean is, and this I, oh, I get such a kick out of this, is whatever I'm doing, not whatever, a lot of things I do within the community that are philanthropic, giving back, yeah. volunteering your time, um, networking, you are there. When, I, when I'm in these events, I literally, I met like the social, you know, in the beginning, there's a social happy hour, whatever it may be. And I go, no way, Sean's here. And so I love that you're so involved with the community. And this isn't like a plug to you. I mean, it, this is patting yourself on the back, but it seems like it comes from, a, from an authentic place, which, which I love. It's not like you're just there, oh, I gotta get the business and then get out. Seems like you really do like to um, connect and help people, and maybe if you get business from it, it's a bonus. Yeah, that's my. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that when you do things that are, you know, fill you up or are authentic or are genuine. Yeah. Um, you just kind of have a better quality of life, right? And yep. so, about halfway through my career, I was like, I'm just going to go out and do what's fun for me and what fills me up. Yeah. And um, you know, re relationships equal business eventually so if you just do what feels right yeah I think you land in the right place and so I, I just I don't even think about it now I just do what I I love what that. I want to do I love that we yeah. talked a little bit about that last week with mindset and just showing up and being kind of tuned into like what your true nature is and if your true nature is inspiring you to do these things and yeah. That well speaking of inspiration perfect. you know you joined um, our hundred wave challenge team for the Boys and Mentoring Network. Yeah. And ever since the day you joined, you've been like 100% committed. You, like, you show up, 
do the thing, uh, donate the money, and you've just been like a rad team member. So I appreciate it. It just goes to show you that like you know you're the yeah. type of guy once you once you join something or commit to something that it's you're all and, in. And that proves that there's th that I have thinking on it because if I, if if I was to calculate my involvement, I'd be like, oh, maybe I'm 85 or 90 percent committed. Yeah. But no, I appreciate that. I do what I can. Sean and I are part of uh, Boys to Men which has a, a dynamic yearly event called the 100 Weight Challenge, where the amount of money raised to help these boys is freaking huge. Yeah, I think they crossed like $400,000 this year on yeah. that one event. It keeps going up. Yeah. So there are watchers, a lot of people on this uh, podcast own real estate, investment real estate, mm -hmm. income property here in town in San Diego. And one of my mentors, and we talked about this episodes ago, talks about how landlords are renting to jobs. You know, we're renting these apartments, right, to families and couples and single people, whatever, but essentially their income streams, these people are working somewhere, mm -hmm. their jobs. And I love, you know, I was thinking about this, the, you know, some things to talk about with you. You're lending, you're helping businesses grow, right, here, here in town. Yes. What, I'm curious on where we're going because San Diego's kind of been this like redheaded stepkid, you know, compared to like LA and San Francisco with the high paying jobs that they have mm -hmm. there, Seattle, um, obviously New York, Chicago, but even on the West Coast. So are you seeing, what are you seeing or are you seeing any trends with business here in, in San Diego from your perspective? Well, the, the, the first statement I would make is that well, I'm no Alan Nevin, right? I'm not an economist. I don't have all the data, but yeah. just my gut instinct on, you know, the people that I deal with and what I see is, uh, first and foremost, San Diego is really diverse yeah. in the um, industries that we have represented. Yeah, we've got huge colleges, we've got tons of government, um, military is what I mean. Yeah, um, and we've got, you know, science um, and biotech yeah we're big in that but the huge undercurrent that is really I think the future is that San Diego's an entrepreneurial hotbed yeah because everyone wants to live here for the climate the lifestyle yeah. San Diego's a little more beachy than LA you know these kind of things the traffic's not as bad right and yeah. so younger entrepreneurs that are trying to create their own reality instead of work for a company yeah like to live here and so there's a huge thriving population of entrepreneurs and those small seed companies are what turn into big companies one day, that. and they create the jobs. I love so that. I think with our diversity, I don't wanna say we're recession proof, but I think San Diego rides through recessions differently than other areas do. Um, and Southern California, Southern California, is gonna to continue to attract more people. So as the population grows, people are gonna to wanna to be here. So I'm mm. super bullish on the jobs and people filling apartment buildings, all that kind of stuff for, yeah. for all those reasons. So yeah, that's, I, that's and refreshing. I also think that if you rewound like 20, 30 years ago, San Diego's kind of the farm town down from LA, right? Sure. It doesn't the, have the, the, the little resort town. It doesn't yeah. Have, yeah. It doesn't have the restaurants, doesn't have yeah. the, but that's changing really rapidly, right? So I think we're kind of in a golden age or the beginning of a renaissance for San Diego. So I think real estate investment, like as expensive as it feels right now. Yeah. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, it's going to be like, this was the, this was the golden age. Like this was when the real pop happened. God, what a trip yeah. that is. That's what I feel. That's my gut instinct. There's something about the roaring twenties that we had a, a century ago. And I think like the decade of being the, the you know, twenties, kind of the same deal yeah. that we're, that I, I, I hear you. It's almost like this kind of shift in where we're at. Mm -hmm. It's not like this, but it's like kind of a shift. Um, big picture because yeah, you're right. We're, we're kind of like the little town at the bottom and It was it was hospitality and biotech and, and not a whole lot of diversity mm -hmm. You know, I think I feel like I see a lot up in Carlsbad Oceanside with digital media and gaming and um, Startups, you know mm -hmm. uh, successful startups that are going in up there Um this kind of goes into my second, thank you for that. I thought, thought that was a great answer. Second question is the general state of the economy, which you kind of answered. Yeah. You know, you feel pot, you feel optimistic. I do. About where we're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for, for us, it's like, you know, thinking about the startups 
And if, if I had a company with 100 employees, I would much rather be down here because of my, my employees' commute to work and their health and well-being outside of the office. And the fact that we have the beach and Mexico and the desert and all these things that hopefully keep people sane, yeah. you know, within their work stuff, I'd rather be here. Well, not all leaders are created the same way, and you obviously care about people, quality of life, yeah. balance, and those things, and yeah. those are things that I think you, um, as you're growing your company, are willing to um, maybe not have as much profit, but to trade for those quality of life issues. And I think that what I've seen is larger companies, when they're looking purely at profit, purely at numbers, uh, when they get to a certain size, there's an expense associated with being in California, right? Yeah. So there are companies that are moving to Texas, right? Because yeah. it's financially attractive. Yeah. But I think we tend to surround ourselves with people that are building companies that have people in them that wouldn't be willing to go to Texas, right? That's like, true. They, they want to live here. So the success of the company, like to your point, is about the people. And you and I are lifestyle oriented. Yeah. We like surfing. We like nature. So yeah, yeah we're obviously going to organize something maybe a little bit differently than some people. Um, 2020, beginning of the year, anything that you're kind of approaching differently with your business? You do a lot of volunteering and a lot of involvement like with Sage and EO. I think that's awesome. Anything different this year? Probably just deeper involvement with EO and Sage. I'm the yeah. exclusive bank sponsor for both of them and they're just such large populations of CEOs and so many relationships. And opportunities yeah. that I have to just take that in stride but that's really fills me up like personally and helps me grow so yeah. the more I spend there the more I get personally um, so more of that um, I'd also like to kind of grow a little bit more of a team in San Diego um, really like to hire somebody to be kind of like my uh, number two or somebody to be almost like an apprentice so yeah. that I can teach somebody the craft and then create more um, vibrations in San Diego yeah and what I'm doing um, so a that. lot of growth opportunity, um, but ahead of all of those things is probably not missing uh, my two boys that are nine and ten, not missing these next eight years with them. Surfing, teaching them how to live in the world, yeah. teaching them how to live in relationship with my friends like you and Cameron and everybody else. Yeah. So that, spending time with them, quality time, is like forefront. That's huge. Yeah. Good, good on you for that. My, my dad growing up... Um, did that, did just that, where he made us kind of a priority mm -hmm. with uh, being involved in coaching and things like that. And I thought that was always really special. Not that I knew it at the time, but looking back, um, it's priceless that you and I are in a in, are in um, careers where, where there is some flexibility. Yeah. And you can take off and go to a baseball or a soccer game or whatever it may be. That's huge. Well, I can only hope to instill the confidence that you have that your dad instilled. Thanks. And also the entrepreneurship to go create your own reality. Like that's my legacy for my kids is that I can instill that into them. Yeah. So I oh, thank might you. have to take your dad out for coffee. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Find out you pick, that pick his brain on, on <laughs> most of the good things. <laughs> Not all good. Um, Nobody's perfect. We're all human, good. right? Um, so geographically, again, a lot of the audience owns apartments in different parts of the county. Fallbrook down to an Imperial Beach and San Cedro. Um, any particular parts of town that you think are more hotbeds for growth, more jobs? Again, thinking about jobs that are really allowing the apartment buildings to be s successful. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious if there's any locations that are hot. Hot's not a good word, but. I, you know, I always feel like South Bay flies under the radar like yeah I, I, national city chula vista those areas like i just feel like there's so much growth opportunity there and when i say growth opportunity i mean like maybe more office buildings and more infrastructure so that people that live down there can work down there you know and so i think as as yeah. we see san diego grow as we've seen utc like really explode um, and we're seeing carlsbad and oceanside the same way yeah and and that continues to happen in south bay like that to me is is sort of our next 
focus area. Yeah, you're close to downtown, you're 10 minutes away. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that live in South Bay and then they commute north of downtowns, whether it be Sorrento Valley or UTC, and those yeah. traffic patterns are pretty tough, so there's something's gotta give, you know? Yeah, those are really so tough. So I hope that you know, there's more office inventory down there, different places for people to work. I always go down the um, Natural City and Barrio Logan, Logan Heights. We saw a lot of park buildings down there. Every time I'm down there, I'm going, what a cool geographically part of town mm -hmm. we're in. Because you're you're right on the right off the five, you're close to downtown. You have the coastal climate because mm -hmm. you're at the beach, basically a yeah. couple miles of the water, the bay, and 32nd, the naval station. So I, I hear you with that. The question um, that came to me as you were talking. The jobs up in North San Diego are people. Are there is there a lot of commuting? You think from Orange County, like, are to and from? Are people living? I'm curious about that. I'm not sure. How many people are going up along you know Camp Pendleton, either to work or? I saw a presentation. I can't remember if it was from Alan Nevin or Gary London, but they showed the traffic patterns of where people lived and where they worked, and then the intersection of it. Interesting. And and the purpose was the frustration of not having housing and offices and people working where they live, and like everyone crossing over each other to get to their work. Yeah, isn't that wasn't it's that wild? crazy? Yeah. It's almost like you could just flip flop some things yeah. and make it a lot easier on people. Yeah, totally. I'm gonna look that up and I'll share I'll share with you um, what I find. And Alan Nevin, we're gonna to see tomorrow because he's the, what a treat, yeah. The econ pro, yeah. yeah he's he's a, he's a superstar for sure. We've got an amazing panel. Not to divert, but we have like all bases covered. I feel like yeah. it's pretty cool. It's gonna be a hugely successful event. And we got some food and some drinks, and there's a Porsche there that's badass. Too. <laughs> it's like old one, like from the '70s. It's really cool. One thing you're looking forward to in 2020. Personal or professional, just kind of what comes to mind. I'm looking forward to going to Tavaroa with you in August. I like it. <laughs> We're going on a Fiji trip with a bunch of, uh, I love that trip because it's a lot of leaders in different yeah. industries. Yeah. A lot of real estate, but it's like a lot of different facets. I know, last time we did it, I went there thinking that I was just going to be focused on surfing and having fun. But I ended up having so much like brain stimulation from conversations. I learned so much. Yeah. I wasn't. See, I didn't see that coming. And now I, I get it. Like it's it's like elevates you on so many levels. And you make you, you you deepen friendships. Like Tim Hoover was somebody who I knew, surfed with. I'm like he's always getting the good waves. Yeah. And now Tim's like a close friend. And yeah. I've invested in in one of his startup companies and we have Cameron Aldrich to thank for that the ultimate community builder right he is he yeah he he's he's good at the, like the linchpin yeah right and he's good at it like why yeah. does everybody everybody show up to things that this guy plans yeah and that's how we met was through him originally yep I try to organize workouts fitness things yeah I'd be lucky if two three people show up <laughs> that's not true well you know I mean it's yeah. it but it's hard and Cameron does it and there's like 18 there's like 10 people there <laughs> Um, I love that. We're going in September and that's something, you know, it's, I love our crew because it's light and it's fun, yeah. but we also have a competitive um, force where we like, we want to be in good shape, yeah. we want to... Can't be slipping up. Yeah, like we, we take it seriously. Yeah. You know, um, Sean and I went to Indonesia in, in August of, of this last year, yeah. four or five months ago. Yeah. And. Uh, Real waves with real consequences. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of cool to have that at the end of the year, as a something to work for, you know. Yeah. So, um, Sean Puckett, VP Mechanics Bank, uh, local superstar who's doing a lot of good things, and um, I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me out. And fun. continue uh, kicking butt. All right, brother. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in, guys.